Sesame Play San Diego is the newest amusement park to open in the state of California. It can be found in Chula Vista, not too far from the Mexico border, and around 25 minutes from downtown San Diego. It is a hybrid water park and amusement park, which is a fusion I hadn't really experienced before. I have been to dry parks with water parks slapped in the middle, but I've never seen a mix match all under one name. In that regard, this is a very unique place. It's also themed to Sesame Street and caters more towards a family audience. That said, some of the park's water slides are quite thrilling for their target audience, which is why there may be something for you to do no matter your age. Now, before we talk about each individual attraction, I think it's important to rewind the clock and recognize the history of the park. Sesame Place San Diego has gone under many ownership changes over the years, as it was originally opened as Whitewater Canyon in 1997. This was an independent family business with a western theme applied to it, but over time the park suffered from management and construction issues leading them to file for bankruptcy in 1998. Then in 1999, Cedar Fair saw the potential to buy the park and did so for 11 million US dollars. Under its new ownership, Cedar Fair gave the park an overhaul and re-theme along with the new name of Knott's Soak City. This would be marketed as Knott's Berry Farm Separate Water Park, which was ironic given the fact that they'd be located two hours apart from one another. Nowadays, there is a more appropriately named Knott's Oak City Water Park located adjacent to Knott's Berry Farm up north. The company went on to sell Soak City in 2012 due to its irrelevancy now that there is another water park in Buena Park. Knott's Soak City would be purchased by SeaWorld Entertainment and rebranded to Aquatica San Diego. This would be advertised as SeaWorld San Diego's water park, which is a bit different from the other Aquatica locations in Orlando, Florida, and San Antonio, Texas that are situated right next to their sister parks, respectively. That being said, a 30-minute distance between SeaWorld San Diego and Aquatica San Diego made much more sense than a two-hour distance between Knott's Berry Farm and Knott's Oak City. In 2018, I purchased a season pass to Aquatica and visited every few weeks. I really got a good feel for the park and I'd written just about everything that there is to do there. The last piece of the puzzle when it comes to this park's history comes in 2019 when SeaWorld Entertainment announced that Aquatica San Diego would become Sesame Place San Diego for the 2021 season. This is probably by far the most significant change in the park's history because for the first time they'd shift from water park to theme park. This would make them the second Sesame Place theme park in the United States just after the location in Langhorne. Pennsylvania, which opened in 1980. The difference between the two parks is that the Pennsylvania Sesame Place had built dry rides and water slides from the ground up. The San Diego Park, on the other hand, already had existing water slides, but because this was never meant to be a children's park, they're relatively intense for their target audience. As a teenager, I appreciate this since it gives me more attractions to experience, but it's definitely odd climbing up these really tall slide complexes and remembering that I'm technically at a park meant for children. It also explains why the park still feels more like a water park than a dry park, though I will say the fusion between the two is done really, really nicely. It doesn't feel sloppy or out of place at it's just a little weird when you have to change into a shirt and shoes to ride any of the dry rides. Now, the Sesame Street theme brought a lot of change to the appearance of the park. Before this, Aquatica was given a bit of a tropical theme and a lot of that landscaping and atmosphere still exists today. But they did a great job incorporating the Sesame Street IP here. The second you enter the park, you are immersed in the Sesame Street neighborhood with lots of colorful buildings, interactive areas, and a handful of attractions. The first ride you'll come across is a carousel that was beautifully constructed, and then if you turn left, you'll get a grand reveal of the rest of the park. Just off the street is your first water slide, Cookie Monster Mixer, which was formerly Tassie's Twister in the Aquatica days. This is a pretty large funnel slide where you sit in a four-person raft and navigate a dark and closed tunnel, a sizable drop, and a massive funnel. This is easily one of the best attractions at the park, just be sure to do it right when the park opens because it easily gets the longest line, even on the day I went, which was a preview day. Which I should address, I did visit this park on an employee preview day since I have a friend that works at SeaWorld, just keep that in mind throughout the review. Anyways, the next attraction you'll see is just behind the aforementioned slide and is the park's only current roller coaster. Super Grover's Boxcar Derby is what it's been named, meaning it shares the exact same name as the Kitty coasters at SeaWorld Orlando and SeaWorld San Antonio. If I had to take a guess, the ride stands probably around 20 feet tall and has a max speed of around 15 miles per hour. It's nothing crazy at all, but it's smooth and packs in decent thrills for kids. Now with the other Sesame Place Park in Pennsylvania, they've recently added a really awesome family wooden coaster called Oscar's Wacky Taxi. I know one of the burning questions amongst coaster enthusiasts is will this park eventually see something like that? Well, they certainly have the space to do it and man would it be a perfect fit because it would give older guests like myself something to do and also something that they'd want to come back to and experience again. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves and focus on what the park has to offer currently. Some of the other prominent slides include Honker Dinger Dash, which was formerly known as Tomato Racer. This is a six-lane mat racing slide and is actually a really fun attraction. Getting to race your friends and experience back-to-back -back drops side-by-side is a blast. Next door, there's also Oscar's Rotten Rafts, which was also there in the Aquatica days. This one is a family raft slide that starts pretty high in the air. This one doesn't have any drops or anything, but there are some really great moments of sway where you're going to make sure you want to hold on. My favorite body slide at the park is Snuffy Spaghetti Slides. This complex is comprised of six slides, two of which are open air and are really tame, and then four are enclosed and relatively thrilling. The slide on the very left-hand side has a sizable drop at the beginning, which allows you to take the rest of the layout at a pretty 
fast pace. This didn't used to be my favorite body slide complex though because there used to be Woohoo Run when this was Aquatica. This was easily the most thrilling slide complex in the park so I totally understand why they chose to get rid of it for the transformation into Sesame Place. One of the slides was an 80 foot tall speed slide, the other was a double drop slide, and my favorite two were the enclosed pink slides on the sides that were fantastic. Fortunately though, this was the only water slide that the park chose to get rid of so it's not a huge loss in the grand scheme of things. The last existing complexes of any true significance is Ernie's Twisty Turny Tunnels and Bert's Topsy Turvy Tunnels. These were not open for employee preview at the park but I've run them many times in the past and they're great for families and children alike. Some other water activities you'll notice is that they have a tame, albeit pretty large, wave pool as well as a lazy river and an interactive play area. Onto the dry rides once again, we already talked about the carousel and the roller coaster but there are a handful others thrown into the mix. Abby's Fairy Flight is a cute chair swing ride, Sesame Street Soar and Spin is a tame spinning flat ride, and Cookie Climb is a cool observation slash kitty drop tower where you pull yourself up to the top. So those are the rides you're going to want to be aware of if you're making your first ever visit to Sesame Place. Another thing that the kids will love is the parade which they do in the Sesame Street area and has playful music and decent floats. Honestly, if you're a family with kids and want to bring them to a theme park, I can't recommend this place enough. But the question of do I recommend this park differs for other guests. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast in search of credits and don't really care about anything else, then I can't say I'd encourage a visit here. Until they get a family wooden coaster, it just isn't worth the price of admission. Same thing if you're a teenager who likes roller coasters or other thrilling flat rides, it just isn't worth it. But if you're into water slides and are being dragged along with your family who has younger kids, don't dread a visit to this place. Some of the slides are actually really entertaining and the atmosphere is lively and fun. Since this video is released, the park should have opened to the public on March 26th, so go check it out if you fit the criteria I just stated. As a theme park fan who loves parks big and small, sometimes you have to go into these places with the right expectations. In regards to how I'd like this place if I were younger, or even now as a water slide enthusiast, it's a pretty cool place. I will say I was thoroughly impressed by the transformation and I think this park is going to fare well amongst the general public. For a final score, I'll be giving Sesame Place San Diego a 6.5 out of 10. It doesn't rank any higher since it isn't meant for my target audience, but I still really enjoyed my time here and look forward to returning when there's something new. While you're here, feel free to give me a like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out against the YouTube algorithm. Thank you all so much for tuning in to today's review and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys.